Okay, so I'm back. Hope you enjoyed the last video. But today we are doing a knife build. Okay, so this one is already for sale. This is a custom order. But we're using some 1095. It's 18 inches long, 3 16 inch thick, and I think it's one and a half inch wide. This is the sketch that we are going to do today. And so. I may make the handle a little longer because the customer said his hands were a little bigger. So we might make that down here, but this is going to be a neck knife. So this video may be split into two parts, you know if you're already watching. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch it out onto this and then I'm just going to cut down where I need to so I can start grinding. Okay, so I've got it roughly marked out, and so now I'm just going to start right here at the tip and cut all the way through. Now that we've got the rough cut, we're going to cut here and then maybe here a little bit and then we're going to finish off the rest with the grinder now this is 10 inches overall which means we have no that doesn't make sense okay so this is 8 inches so we have 10 inches left to make another knife. We'll save that for another project since it's 1095. It looks a little bit rough, but that's what the grinder's for. The main part we had to get off was this giant corner right here. As you can see, that's how big what we just cut off. Then we cut a little bit down, then we cut a little bit into the handle right here to make it a little bit easier to grind. Okay, I'll get back to you with the grinding. Okay, so I just have this over my leg so I don't get sparks all over me and it burns. But I'm going to turn my light on. That should help me and you. And then this should be a little bit loud. So I'm going to try to cut the volume down. If the volume won't cut down, the clip will probably cut right now so you guys don't have to die from the hearing okay so I've done the rough grinding on the blade on my pinch grinder and now all I have to do is refine the grind with my belt sander back here and so I'm gonna go refine it and so yeah okay so I'm done with the fine grinding and I flattened out the steel as you can tell now it's getting a little late on day one so I'm gonna call it quits for today, which won't be a whole night for you guys, but I'll be back tomorrow. Okay, since we've done our fine grinding and everything's to shape, oh, and I've added a finger notch, or not a finger notch, that's a sharpening notch. Um, I did that off camera yesterday. But okay, so now what you do, since this is 3 16 inch thick, you take the same size drill bit that the thickness of your steel is and you clamp it down to a flat surface. I just use this chair because it won't scrape up the steel because I've had bad experiences. I've tried to do it on steel. It doesn't work. Clamp it down so it's flat and then you just take a colored sharpie and go down the whole front of the blade or where the blade's going to be. It doesn't matter if you get it on the side or anything. 
because you're gonna burn it off in the bevel. Okay, so what this does, you scrape it on the drill bit, and this leaves a perfect center line between the two sides of the steel. I typically don't do this because I seem to get my bevels pretty straight but this I'm just showing you so you can get your C. Okay, this clip may be a, a little loud for headphone users and everything so I suggest turning down your audio a little bit now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my bevel about in the center of this notch and then I'm going to go all the way down this side of the blade but before we start the full bevel what you want to do is you want to take it at about a steep angle and then you want to do your rough cuts this is going to give you so you can work down the blade and this also helps if you have thick steel like I do like 3 16 so I'm going to show you a little bit then I'll turn it off so I won't blow up your ears which I may be talking a little loud right now because I have earplugs in You can already tell you're getting there a little bit, but yeah, so that's it. Make sure you keep, well, I haven't done tempering and heat treating yet, but it still helps if you keep it cool so you don't burn your hands while you're doing it. So that's pretty much it. Okay, so I've done, I'm finished with the beveling before heat treat. Afterwards, I'll bring it together. But as you can see, 16, uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch, that's what it looks like. And that's what I beveled, if you can see. I messed up a little there, but hand sanding will get that out. Okay. So next, we will drill holes, which this is the design I have for holes. We're going to go up the whole handle with them. Since this is a neck knife, I will not be adding a handle scales. Then, on to heat treat. So what I've done is I've skipped the whole part with drilling this hole out because it took about, I don't know, 45 minutes to completely get this out. The drill bits got it almost all the way through. This is, what did I figure out? It's 13 sixteenths. This is, and it, I didn't need it to fit this finger all the way, so that's how I kind of went with it. But it fits the pinky all the way, which that's what it's mainly for, is holding with the pinky for stabs and drawing from the sheath but so I skipped this part and then all I've done to it after that is I've just sanded it up to 600 grit so it's ready now for heat treat and that'll be the next clip you guys see
Now we're going to temper the blades and put it in there at 450 for two hours. When the blade becomes a golden wheat color, it means it is done tempering. Okay, off camera, I've put a finished edge. You won't be able to see because it's so thin and sharp. But then I took it to a small buffing wheel and completely made the edge clean so it is a completely clean, sharp edge. As you can see, it whittles wood and it's sharp enough to cut through it completely in one go. It just cut halfway through the wood. It's a little bright out here, but I've just finished um, sanding up to 600 grit. You can still see some grind scratches, but I'm not relatively worried because I think the patina will hide that. But when you're looking at it straight on, you can't see those. As you can see, it kind of did go to a mirror polish, basically at 600 grit on the whole knife but now we're just gonna force the patina on it and if we need to we're gonna finish up the edge on the stone and then a kydex sheath for it and there we go what I've t done is I have put the patina on it as you can see, it's still a little bit reflective, but it's darkened, and which means it should prevent rust a little more. And then I kind of touched it up on the stone, and then used the buffing wheel, and it is extremely smooth. I'm not very good at the S-cuts, but... You get the point. Extremely sharp. But, next things next, we build a... We build, excuse me, we build a Kydex sheath for it. So, I skipped over the sheath making process because basically it was trial and error. This was my first Kydex sheath. As you can see, there's imperfections. This one, I ground too close. They're not fully aligned. There was a little bit of slippage right there. That's the back. But it did turn out pretty nice. Pops out really nice. Has a snap and then it is a neck knife and you can just pull it like that so everything that the customer required was put into this sheath oh it's going in backwards that's why and I think it looks pretty nice so this is the final product and if you watch the video this far you deserve to get to see the end product I can't remember if I've already showed you the knife final, but here it is. So that's it. If you like this video and want more like this, uh, hit the subscribe button and then like the video to show me that you actually did like the video and leave a comment, uh, style a knife or blade that you want to see next or maybe a review or something. So. Thanks. Bye.